All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Late Night Shots Podcast, episode 69 today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even deal with a straight face. But anyways, we'll get right into it. Um, today, Gwiz vs. Gable, that's the title. But we're going to get on through the entire Olympic trials seating at heavyweight. So, Nick Wazdowski is the one seat. You know, I heard a lot of controversy about this, but it's been said for a while now that's how it's going to be. It was made clear before the RTC Cup when Gwiz did take a loss to Mason Paris and he took a loss to Gable Stevenson that the one seed was locked before that. Just because he yep. takes the loss doesn't get rid of that. He's a two-time world yep. bronze medalist, you know, and that's not going to change because nobody at that weight class has an Olympic medal or has a higher world medal than two bronzes. One bronze wouldn't mm-hmm. give him the criteria for Nick Wazdowski since he's competing. I don't think that really matters because I think Gwiz versus Gable is going to sort itself out. And so it's pretty yes. irrelevant here, especially because Gwiz doesn't have a buy there because he's not an Olympic medalist. Right. Right. Either way, we'll say that Gable Stevenson just won an NCAA title and your co-house trophy winner is the right. two seed. You know, this is where I'll switch a couple things up. They have Mason Paris, NCAA finalist, two-time Big Ten finalist as the three seed. And they have Don Bradley as the four seed. Right. I mean, personally, I will say I would put Don Bradley at the three, Mason Paris at the four, for the sole fact that there's no real criteria that puts him over there, except for one placing higher at senior nationals because Don Bradley smacked Tanner Hall in the face. Right. He lost in that semifinal. Again, that is what it is at this point, but personally, I'd put Don Bradley over Mason Paris. That's, again, just pure bias. The one loss, one win over Nick Wazdowski doesn't mean anything when Don Bradley has like four. Yeah. That's all comparative because it's all on senior level. And they've and he's been around much longer than all these guys, you know? Yeah. Five seed, Tony Nelson, two-time national champ from Minnesota, three-time national finalist. Did place silver at one of these tournaments that just happened. So, yep. That's pretty good. And uh, six seed is uh, Greg Kirkley from Penn State. I, I agree with the seeding. You know, I would say I would personally put him over Tony Nelson. But, again, that'd be going against my own logic because Tony Nelson's – most recent match with Greg Kirkley, he does have head tag criteria because he took a 3-0 win, I think was in 2019 or 2018. But this is, again, when Kirkley competed on the senior level and just straight went U23s, beat Jordan Wood for the spot, won the first two, yeah. swept him. One of the spots, I think, took a silver gold medal at Worlds, you know. And that was, again, a Greg Kirkley that had no ACL, right? Yeah. We see what Kirk can do when he's healthy. He held a one-point match with Gable Stevenson, who was like a six or yes. seven-point favorite in that match. Number seven seed, Tanner Hall. I think this is where the weight class takes a more steep drop off. Tanner Hall, I think, is an all is a fourth place All American for Arizona State. Qualify yeah. for this, I think, making the senior national finals or something like that. I think the bid was. Yeah. You know, I think no, he didn't qualify for that. Actually, he made it through the last chance qualifier. So, yes, yeah. he tagged Jordan Wood 11 zero in the finals, locked up a couple guns, took him over. Right. I was saying, I don't think he makes it too far in this for the sole fact that he is. He doesn't have enough offense, right? And he's getting a lot of passivity calls on him just against these guys who's matched up with. Because first turn, he's going to have Gable Stevenson. I'm going to assume that he's, he will give Gable Stevenson a little bit of trouble, just stall the match out a little bit. But I still think it's a tech yep. in the first period. Possibly yes. under a minute, right? I don't think Gable's transitional offense is going to work too well on him. You know, Gable obviously doesn't have as good as parterre offense as a guy like Nick Wazdowski, right? Or Greg Kirkley, yep. for that matter. All right, eight seed is going to be Garrett Ryan, um, Columbia alumni. I'm actually unsure of how he qualified, but he did. He's there. Pulls Nick Wazdowski, pulls uh, Jordan Wood than Nick Wazdowski first round. You know, not the best draw. You know, a guy I think is more happy just to compete at this level, which is good for him again. But yep. I think this is, you know, guys are just happy to make them the trials. Honestly, like I'm saying that like that's nothing. It's, yep. it's huge. But is he in the conversation for a spot? Not really at this point, right? Nine seed, Jordan right. Wood. This is uh, one I really want to talk about. Did not place the Nationals. Lost in the round of 16 to Wyatt Hendrickson from Air Force. And right. he's now into Olympic trials. That just goes to show the depth. You know, that may have also been a factor for Gable getting the co Yeah. That just shows how deep the weight class was. You never see a guy who doesn't place yeah. the Nationals, like assume they're in college, a guy that doesn't place the Nationals getting a bit to Olympic trials. Like, that shit just doesn't happen. Keep in mind, Brandon Courtney didn't yeah. qualify for Olympic trials. Now, obviously, Spencer Lee does because every national champ gets a bid, right? Spencer Lee, I think, would have been pretty decently a lower seed, just corner criteria. If they hadn't been one team, that's absolute bullshit because he didn't do anything to deserve that. 
I think he beat Vito and he beat yep. Nato, so he'd be above them too. I think he's Surian still has criteria on the freestyle scene. Unless they take the folk style criteria yeah. from three year ago national finals, which I don't think will matter because Surian already has a couple of medals at these events. Yeah. I'm talking really fast, but like there's a lot to talk about. So um no, even with all this being said too, like a first place finisher, a fourth a second place finisher, a fourth place finisher a seven place finisher and around the 16 guy all made the Olympic trials. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's really the folks out that the top wrestling that kind of booted Kirk Lee there. I think Kirk Lee was number five. I don't think anybody really argues that, you know, I think he mops the floor with Gremel and B Tilger again. Schultz. Yeah. Impressed a lot, you know, wrote him out. That's essentially what happened, you know, and again, yeah. who's the one guy bigger than Colton Schultz? Tony Cassiope wrote him out. <laughs> Now, Schultz's hand fighting is going to take him far in Greco, and that's going to be very interesting because I think we will go over that bracket. But I don't think there's much to talk about again except for Colton Schultz versus Duncan, which will be a video of his own in the future. But Jordan Wood is 19 in the bracket. And that, that literally speaks to the depth of this weight class. I remember I saw one yeah. guy just say 125 is, 125 is always harder because everybody sees his weight class. No, they're literally out here like lightweight dudes cursing him out because that's just so – bias and arrogant of a take just like uneducated just to say something like that because again 125 has won the least amount of pod trophies ever i'm pretty sure right maybe tied for lowest now because they have two four especially was the first ever winner at 125 yeah heavyweight has the most yeah. again or tied for the most at 165 we had the most again and then you know generational talents jordan burrows and david taylor show up at 165 and Kyle Dick, too, I think, won his senior year if he didn't take a loss Yep. earlier, right? Now, that, that, that's cool. Just cool things to think about because people just kind of say, especially, oh, he's much more dominant. He really wasn't much more dominant. Yeah. He was like, a, it was a little bit more dominant. Yeah, I'll give that to him. But the, how much harder did his weight class were? Careful. Yeah. That easily overruled it and much more at that. Like, it's not like that hurt him a little bit. That, that brought him down from like up here. Gable's down here. That brought him, like, all the way back down. Just that strength of schedule yep. alone. Right. But yep. now it's getting to the Olympic trials. So, round of 16, I'm pretty sure that's how it works because, like, Wiz doesn't have any buys. It's going to be Garrett Ryan versus Jordan Wood right here. So, I think, again, Jordan Wood's again the guy who's held nice matches with with Mason Paris. But Mason Paris did take him out the RTC Cup. And I will say that, again, Mason Paris at the RTC Cup was the best version of Mason Paris I've ever seen. Yeah. That Mason Paris on that day may have beaten Gable Steves. Probably, yeah. And I will say this, like, I get like, oh, you're hitting on Gable, all that bullshit like that, but all I said was Mason Paris had a more impressive run at the RTC Cup. And I said, oh, Gable should be worried now, <laughs> right? When yeah. everybody's coming right. at me, like, he didn't just beat Nick Wazdowski. The fact that it was a rematch is pretty irrelevant to that, you know, again, yeah. Gable gets caught in that lace, he gets tech too, like. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure anybody in the country, except for maybe Don Bradley or Tony Nelson, just based on how big they are and how experienced they are in the freestyle circuit. Right? Yeah. Right. Like, you think Nick Wazdowski's lace is good? Wait till you meet fucking Tahoe in the Olympics, dude. Like, like that, like that is something else. I know people yeah. were talking about Adam Coons got wrench. Wait till you see Mihan Lopez. Like, you're, if you, there, there's always the next level to this once you get on the international scene. These are weight classes we yeah. don't rule, and we have rule. Gable looks like yeah. the one maybe opportunity on that scene, depending on how he clashes styles with these guys. You know, Kazan Boy, Rakimar from Uzbekistan, 2-2 two two against Gable Stevenson. You know, it's not like he beat him earlier in his career. Gable won the earlier matches, and he pinned him later in his career. Yeah. It seemed like he was getting better at a faster rate than Gable was. Yeah. Right, so that that just makes things even more interesting when we get there. I think Gable maybe I think sees are random at the Olympics too. Yeah, I part, think so. If you're not a medalist, so that could essentially mean Gable could pull Tahal Gould, Gino Petrosvili first round. You know, he can either pull the biggest ups of the tournament or that. You know, you know that's that's assuming the favorite right now, Gable Stevenson in the tournament because we don't know yet. Right. Yeah. I'll say this. I think the top six guys could realistically make a run at that title. Right? Yeah. Unlike any other weight class, I think if Kurt V is 100% healthy, he gets past Nelson, and he gets past Bradley, and he gets past Paris. Gabe and Gwiz are the two right. things. He can get past them. I'm not saying he will. Right? 
Right. Tony Nelson, you know, is a guy who's stuck there. I think I don't think he goes up. Maybe he's Zambrelli. You know, either way, I think Nick Wazdowski beats him for this whole fight that he's he's getting old. I think he's the oldest, second oldest of these guys behind Don Bradley. And, you know, when you're bigger and heavier that frame, your body wears on you a lot quicker than it does for most guys. And yes. that's just the fact of it. And we've seen it happen over and over and over again. He took down Mason Paris. I will say that's a good thing. Took him down. Took him down with a quick shot, a quick high crotch too. So he can still score at that level. It just kind of looked like Mason Paris kind of – Body. He hit him with a dub and hit him with two more gut wrenches, which I really didn't expect him to be able to hit. You know, Mason Paris yeah. looks like he's hitting those part turns off of just pure strength, too, which is absolutely insane at this level. And if he's gotten yeah. stronger and he takes Gable Stevenson down once, who knows if he could lock that up? Because Tanner Hall is a guy who's literally known for his ability to stall in part defense. Yeah. And he literally obliterated everything he had. No? Right. Right, first round matchup. I I will take Jordan Wood over Garrett Ryan. I think he takes like pretty close win. I think this is real toss up right here. But the way Garrett Ryan was performing at the Americas Cup, I was watching that for a little bit. I wasn't too impressed with that. I think Jordan Wood looked like he wrestled good this tournament, right? And that's Jordan Wood's a little inconsistent this yep. season, but he looks like he's wrestled good this tournament. And if he wrestles the same way he did the last chance qualifier, you know, again he got caught with a gut wrench, a trap arm gut. He didn't stand at all, and that's as yep. a big dude with a guy. These levels, guys can manufacture those turns, and they can do them consistently. If you get caught with that as a heavyweight, there's no way getting out of it. Yeah. Unless you're just that much better. So, yeah. that will push him into our first quarterfinal match where he will have Nick Wazdowski. I, I've said this multiple times. Jordan Woods, a guy, solid in all positions. Will make you work for every single takedown. Yeah. And he's done that when he wrestled Gable, when he wrestled Paris. And when he was wrestled really anybody else here, you know, Tanner Hall may be the one exception. I was yep. really surprised by that. Nick Wazdowski, yep. you know, I think it's going to come down to five takedowns. That's essentially. And if yep. he catches lace, it's over. You know, that just goes without being said. But I do yep. think Nick Wazdowski handles Jordan Wood in that quarterfinal match. I think Gwiz is the best game planner. And I don't think he's going to overlook – Garrett Ryan or Jordan, whoever makes out of that, or Don Bradley or Tony Nelson for that matter, because he knows those are guys who have all went back and forth their entire career. Yep. All right. So I will take Nick Wazak by take full in that match. Gable Stevenson versus Tanner Hall will be our quarterfinal match. With how good Gable is at putting up points on you when he's already yeah. put up points before, right? When she's all Gable in that Big Ten final, he didn't shoot, didn't take any real shots, or any didn't score for the first two minutes. Yeah. Then points came, 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 came. And now that we're seeing this gas tank yeah. in a six-minute match when you have a 30-second break, Gable plays the edge very well against an opponent like Tanner Hall is not quick enough, athletic enough, or strong enough to hang with them. That That is just the fact of the matter. Right. Gable will most likely tech him, you know, again – we saw Gable against Trent Hilger. Trent Hilger's not a freestyle guy. You yeah, just saw him, the freestyle savviness take over in the, in the Beat the Streets finals. You know, there's yeah. not that much of a talent gap between the two. The two. It's just yeah. one's, one's that good at freestyle, one's not, you know? Yeah. That's just really what that is. You know, I think Gable will tech fall him. I just say it's sub one minute. Because yeah. he's already seen Mace and handle him. And Gable's transitional offense will make it probably pretty quick, right? Now yep. we have Mason Paris versus Greg Kerfoot. I'm taking Mason Paris in this match. And I'm taking him 6-2. to two. Right? Kerfoot has proved he can put up points. I don't think Paris can turn him, though. And Mason kind of looked to blow That's right through him. You know, again, I assume Kerfoot could hit the splits or something out of position, which he can definitely do. Yeah. He just still looked injured. And he looked hurt because he you saw that look on his face and he just bailed on a bunch of shots. You know, getting spun behind and all stuff like that. He, he took one good shot against Mason Paris and he completed it. He took one very good shot against Gables. He took two very good shots. One was just defended by a better opponent. And one was scored. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's essentially, I think he needs to learn how to pick his shots a little bit better and he can definitely beat Mason Paris. And after he does that, you know, I don't see Gable Stevenson, Nick Wazdowski being too far ahead of him. Yep. 
you know, I, uh, I will take Mason Paris in this matchup because I just think the precedent's been set and it will probably happen again. You know, I really yeah. want Kirkley to win. I'm rooting for him to win this, but yeah, I just think Paris's age will be this right now. I think Kirkley needs another year and he's going to be the guy for his Gable Stevenson finals if he doesn't go off to WWE and if he chooses to stay. And that's what his bloody announcement is. But is it out? What? No, who knows what the damn Dude, thing is. I mean, you think it'd be out the announcement. Yeah, and it's pissing me off. Because you're not you guys aren't gonna see this till tomorrow night. It's probably already out by then. We're filming this day in advance. But yeah, it's it's fucking annoying, but uh core five matchup four versus five seed, four versus five seed, typical boring matches. I love Don Bradley, he's my guy, mm-hmm. repping his merch right here. You know, guys supporting came on the podcast when nobody else really wanted to, so as my guy, he's probably my favorite dude here. Probably the biggest time for a bracket buster. I think he beats Tony Nelson. He's beaten him pretty much every time in the past. He's not a guy who's gonna tech tech fall you. If you get tech fall by Don Bradley, kind of, I don't want to say you suck. Like that's like saying, like if you got majored by Pat Lugo in college, you didn't genuinely suck. That was a decision to pin guy, and yeah. we saw that, right? Don Bradley is a guy yeah. who picks and chooses shots. He wrestles like a cow bake. He's a bitch to score on. He's almost yeah. 100% on his attacks. Yeah. And he's smart and he manages his match extremely well. And that's why a guy like Nick Wazdowski, a guy like Kyle Dick's been so good. But then comes a freak athlete like uh-huh. Jordan Burroughs. Right. That just shows how much of a game of inches this is. Like Jordan Burroughs' head position was maybe like an inch higher. He blows through Kyle Dick on that blast double. No, and it wasn't. Yeah. He got stuffed and he got chest wrapped for four. And he ultimately lost that match, and Kyle Dakes a whiny little bitch about it, so he wants to go gloat about one win when you all have seven losses. <laughs> but it's absolutely hilarious just to think about. I don't, I don't really care, you know. I was rooting for Isaiah yeah. Martinez. Yeah. That one genuinely hurt because he's, like, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, like, regardless of weight class. Like, he's one of the guys I truly love watching. Truly one of the most yeah. underappreciated wrestlers on this scene, and I've said that before. Isaiah Martinez, yeah. Alex Derringer. Um, if you're going back to college careers, Gabe Dean too, because he got he was because Bo Nickel beat him, you know, and uh, he got revenge. <laughs> That's good. And talk about it. Dean is peaking. He looks like he's peaking. Seven to two win over Nate Jackson is fucking huge. That was two to one at senior nationals. Yeah. It was five to four, six to seven at the next event, and seven to two now. I would have yeah. thought Nate Jackson would have won one of those matches based on how close it was, but yeah. This Gabe Dean, I don't know if anybody wants to wrestle. Hmm. I think he's a five seed, and he has Miles Martin for a fun. Miles Martin would have been the finals matchup at the 195 bracket, but Gabe Dean got caught pinned by Taylor Lujan. Pretty sure Lujan got pinned by somebody. but And you can't underestimate Nate Jackson. Too. Nate Jackson beat Mark Hall. Yeah. Granted, Mark Hall also almost lost to Chris Foka, but... <laughs> Whatever. Um, no, a lot of these things being said, I I think there's a genuine chance that David Taylor goes down. You know how crazy that'd be? You know, my best rival, the whole flow film, all this crap, all this winds up. And Kyle Dake and David thing Taylor never make an Olympic team. And David Taylor was the favorite to win by, like, a lot. I think I think Dake I think um Gabe Dean would literally versus David Taylor was a world final level matchup. David Taylor's a guy and Kyle Dake are guys that take their preparation so seriously for matches. And if you hold yeah. a close match to him, it's not because they wrestle bad. You never see Kyle Dake wrestle bad. Yeah. He knows he treats his body perfectly. And same thing with David Taylor. Like yeah. They're at that level and they've done it so well and their bodies are so good shape for that exact reason. I think David Taylor has another run in him. I don't know about Kyle Dake. Yeah. I think I think my bet my money's on Armar if he comes back. Jordan Burroughs. Last run, you know, one of the greatest wrestlers, greatest figures in the sport that we will ever see. Too. Yeah. But yeah, I think Don Bradley, <laughs> I'm getting way too off topic. Don Bradley will win that court final match, I think. Two to one, three to one. He won a two to one last time. Starting out, and that's really all it was. The thing that might have hurt him is passivity calls. Now, yeah, I, I said Dom over Paris in seeding wise, but again, Dom versus Kirk Lee, it may just be the matchup that kills him. Yeah. Kirk Lee, it's just maybe just too fast for him. 
You know, if you look at athleticism, overall speed wise, Curry is faster wrestler, quickness wise, and moving change of direction is stable. Because Curry is able to pull himself around and get in from space. Gable likes to work from the ties and you know, obviously it's just different styles of attacking. Kirk Lee likes to attack the ankles. Gable doesn't do that as much anymore. He'll attack below the knee though. Right. Yeah. Now we get to these semifinal matches. The first one's gonna be Nick Wazdowski versus Don Bradley. I've said Don Bradley's a bracket buster. He can beat Nick Wazdowski. If he wrestles good that day, he, he can beat Nick Wazdowski. Nick Wazdowski has another one in him. Tony Nelson, Don Bradley are gonna be gone after this. Yeah. Don Bradley is at his third Olympic trials. He went to the London trials, went to the Rio trials. Now he's at Tokyo. He's coming off a couple good wins. You know, he lost a match yeah. to Nick Wazdowski 3-0. Came down to one push-off point off a re-attack in one very good shot by Nick Wazdowski. Don Bradley was looking to get right. completely shut down his doubles. I, don't, I think a couple adjustments in their scoreboard. But again, Gwiz is so good at game planning yeah. for matches. Yeah. It's- Don Bradley is a match he needs to game plan for. You know, he went into some of these matches at the American yeah. Cup with an agenda, per se. You know, if you saw him against Sean Streck, he was only attacking with the right arm control ties, something like that. I think Mike Mal was commentating. Yeah. It was very interesting because I think Mike Mal is the only one good commentator they have. That actually knows enough about the sport to actually say stuff. Yeah. But, like, yeah. He's, like, the one that I genuinely like. And he commentates it so well because he actually brings up the technical aspect. All these other commentators just want to bring the entertainment aspect. Because I want you, like, you know, that's what you really want to yeah. see in, like, again, a company that's all wrestling, right? Yep. With that, I do think it's a lot closer match. I'm going to give Nick Wazowski a one-point match there. I don't know how many points he scored. Yeah. I don't think he can get – I don't think he gets turned. Right. I think Dom Bradley yeah. can very well pull this out. People are sleeping way too hard on him, right? Yeah. Then we have either Gable versus Kirkfleet or Gable versus Paris. Gable versus Paris. I don't know how good Paris does against transitional offense. Yeah. And judging by his first match against Wiz, not too well. And that was not yeah. even that big of a transition. That was a guy locking up lace after a couple seconds and then turned. Gable will be on that grab a lease midair and just go with it, go with it, go with it. That made yeah. you be unparished. I do think, again, Paris has a good enough coaching staff. He has a good enough practice partner in Adam Kuhn to not let that happen. Right. You know, I do think Gable handles this match. I think, think it's 6-0, possibly a tech, but it's going to be a late match tech. You know, I could be very well wrong. This Gib could walk through him, but I don't think so, based on the fact that Paris has yeah. made it closer in the second match. You know, Gable also yeah. be wrestling a little bit more conservative. And obviously that's just because he has to wrestle five matches that tournament compared to the three and big tens. Yeah. And that's always going to become a factor because he has to wrestle Tanner Hall and he has to wrestle Mason Paris. You have to assume that Gable Stevenson is going to make this to the finals. I think everybody's assuming that right now. Not a lock. What I will say is if he – what he has to do to beat Nick Wazdowski in the finals – is get a quick tech against Tanner Hall in the under a minute and tech Mason Paris. He doesn't want to wrestle his entire six minutes. And those are just to keep his yeah. own gas in. Because the Olympic trials are wrestled in one day. Yeah, Five matches against these guys are not the same thing as you beating um, this kid, Jer Hino or Tegadali, whatever his name is, from Campbell, a 33 seater walks in, you know? Yeah. And who do you be in the round of 16? Somebody, why Hendrickson from Air Force teched him. Hendrickson yeah. looked, Hendrickson's a guy I really want to talk about coming the next season if he's coming back. Dude, dude had a yeah. fantastic story. He pinned Luke Luffman in the first period, too. Yeah. You yeah. know, he beat Greg Kerfley. Greg Kerfley gave him a match. You know, he's yeah. like, oh, wrestling nice for a friend. I doubt Gable does that. Possibly he did. It didn't look like it, just looked like he was wrestling with respect for his athleticism, which he has to do again with Nick Wazdowski, too. Right? Yeah. Those are guys you can't just. Charge senselessly at and expect them to bow down to you. Those guys know they can score, and they have. Yeah. Right, and then he walked through Cassiope. Cassiope's getting a guy you can charge at to an extent for the sole fact that Cassiope's mating is based on his hand fighting. And if you beat him with the hand fight, right. and even if you're just as athletic as him, you beat him with the hand fight, you're you can get the shots. Cassiope can scramble. I'm not right. saying anything about that, but he scrambled on Christian Lance right. won a four zero match. 
he can't scramble against Gable right. Stevenson. Gable Stevenson finishes too quick for a guy like that, you know. If we're talking about a guy like Greg Kirkley and Nick Wazdowski, possibly they can scramble. But it's all going to come down to that in those matches. And then he beat Mason Paris in the Fouts, probably wrestled one of the most conservative matches we've ever seen. You know, obviously you have the adrenaline factor in that. But Nick Wazdowski is going to be – he's a whole new beast. You know, I know he lost Mason Paris – but Gwiz makes better adjustments than any wrestler at this weight class. Yeah. And that has to be no. If Gable comes out there and underestimates Gwiz because he beat him once. Gwiz beat him twice before. You know, we thought because right. of that criteria win, Gable would blow him out of the water next time. Gwiz won again. He's consistent. He knows what he's doing. You're not going to play mind games with him. And he makes great adjustments in between matches. Yeah. I think if that match were wrestled 10 times on that day, it would have been split 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. The problem here, I've said it, if Nick Wazowski takes a third match, he wins and he gets the Olympic spot. You know, people are going to call this an upset. I don't think it's an upset either way. I think it's the most even-based matchup. I think Mason Paris can make the finals too. Like, I would not be surprised. I think Greg Kerfley can also. The only one yeah. guy I can really rule out is Tony Nelson against Nick Wazowski just because the sole fact that Nick Wazowski is so good to get into Tony's legs, there's just something about it. I don't yeah. – about that matchup is just weird. You know, Don Bradley, again, can win that. Just one blast double and hold him off. He's not time to time again. You know, obviously at the bottom three, Tanner Hall, Garrett, Ryan, Jordan Wood, I would kind of rule out in this situation for that sole fact. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to not be biased this one. You know, obviously I would just say Gable or Gwiz. I like yeah. Gwiz a lot, but I do think it's a lot closer of a matchup than people think, right? Yep. Gable, Stevenson versus Nick Wazdowski now for the finals. Gable could very well come out here in Tekken twice, right? I would not be surprised. It if could he catches fire, then? It, it could happen. But yep. again, he's not a – Paris got good with being a volume shooter against Nick Wazowski because Nick Wazowski, he just gave him no room to breathe. And then he gave him some room to breathe, fired right back at him. And he ended up getting teched, you know? And that just shows yeah. how good a Nick Wazowski is at making adjustments like that. Yeah, I think Gwiz kind of got out of his own game plan there against that match, which you rarely ever see him do. Yeah, and that caused him to lose to Paris the second time. You know, Paris looked like he just yeah. muscled that leg lace at the end. That that seems absolutely crazy to me. If he can lock that up, I don't. I see no reason why he can't turn Gable Stevenson and Nick Wazowski again. Yeah. No. I do think the favor at this point will be in Nick Wazowski's favor. I say that for so sole fact that Gable has to go through Mason Paris or Greg Kerfley. That's a fair right. point. Yeah, Kerfley is not a guy you can turn that easily. Kerfley at Russell's has – he is the best coach in the country right now. Right. You know? And possibly the best coach of all time when all is said and done. Yeah. Right. So it's like, what do you think about it? Kale Sanderson has produced – he was like, oh, Kale Sanderson won't catch up to Dan Gable. You know, I know Dan Gable was, again, the legend, whatever, that. Kale Sanderson produced yeah. four national champs in a year they were projected to have none. Yeah, I mean. Except for Brooks. And Brooks cut it close -er than anybody else. Like, I get – I would rather have four individual champs than team title. You know, perhaps Iowa, that's cool, all that, you know. Team championships are cool by the end of the day. Rob Howard met Pat McKee when he was on fire. Bo Bartlett didn't qualify. Those two things change. Maybe a different story. Yeah, and I was a big favorite this year. Only won one title. Yeah. You know, I, I think championship should be maybe a little bit more, but I don't think you should be able to win four in, in individual titles and the other team not win more than – not win at least yeah. two and you still lose. Yeah, I think that's kind of – You know, it came with the bonus, bonus points because, like, Ironman lost to Nick Lee. But since he pinned his yep. way there, he got so many bonus points. Yeah. Oh, Nick Lee at the trials, bro. Is he at the trials? Is I, Nick Lee at yeah, the trials? Okay. I will actually check Bashamania's page right now. I have no reason to, to think that Nick Lee won't go to the Frank Molinero's back. Oh, yeah. I didn't mention that to you, but yeah, he's back. Dude, these 16 five seasons are insane. Jordan yeah. Oliver over James Green, I don't agree with. 
just based on his last performance. I yeah. even switched my eyes. Joey McKenna is so big of a bracket buster here. He could beat James Green. He could beat Zane Rutherford. And Yanni said himself, you listen yeah. to what's it called? Wrestling changed my life. He was talking about that. Yeah. He's like, Zane doesn't make mistakes. He's going to brow. He's going to brow with you. And Yanni knows. It's just like, it all comes down to Yanni's look like he's been offensively shut down. And Zane. Yeah. For the, for in, that, in that last match, because Zane made so much adjustments there. He was like, people like, oh, Yanni going to win this, that. By the time I turned the flow stream off, the match was over and everybody's just walking out the building. Like, it was absolutely, like, yeah. Gable versus Gwiz. You know, um, Gwiz is the big better one. game planner. Gable's a better athlete. Gwiz is stronger. Gable can change directions quicker, you know. Gwiz can scramble better. Gable, can Gwiz scramble better? Gable has the fans on the side. Gwiz is a better scramble than anybody at this weight class. Gwiz was hitting ankle passes on Kyle Snyder. That's fair. Yeah. I think. <laughs> like, and I've said it again. Like, people act like that match wasn't close. Like, I would have stalemated it's that just, in overtime. It's, it's so difficult with um, It's so difficult with good game planners to make picks just because mm-hmm. they tend to have less of, like, a definitive style and more just, like, things that they're really good at. Mm-hmm. But their main skill is obviously making adjustments. Yeah. The, like, the main thing that I think could work against Gwiz here is if Gable doesn't make the finals. I think if Paris think could make the finals. I know. I think if Paris I, – I know that Gwiz is game planning for Gable. He just has to be right now. G- yeah, Gable and Don Bradley, he knows, right? That's why he, yeah. they wrestled him at the America's Cup. That's why he took a lot of these matchups. If he wrestles Kirk Fleet, he had the opportunity to wrestle Kirk Fleet. He didn't do it. At the Wolfpack RTC right. versus Knitting Line Wrestling Club. That may have been a good match to take. Curry Fleet yeah. wrestled uh, Deontay Wilson. Teched him pretty quick. Uh, there's nothing much to say there. You know, Deontay Wilson, probably not the same caliber as your Curry Fleet. Crazy enough, they're only one seed apart in Nationals. Hmm. To say, but I think it's going to impact his game plan a lot because Mason Paris is not a style you can predict. In, in the rate Mason Paris is progressing against Gwizdowski, you never know because yeah. You know, I, I will also say if there was a third match wrestled, I think Mason Paris would have won that on that day. Right. You know, just based on the way he was wrestling, you know. If Mason Paris peaks, nobody in this bracket can beat him. Yeah, Gable Stevenson. I've never seen like one of those days like he did at the RTC Cup. Yeah, I've never seen Gable wrestle like out of himself, like so much better than you actually think he would be. Yeah, except for maybe Big Ten finals. You know, he just looked like he has in the proof. He just looked like he was more offensive, and he kind of broke Paris a little bit more than he was wrestling that crazy. You know, wrestling case we go up to that day that Jo tech Joe McKenna in under a minute. That's yeah. like he peaked on that day. Yeah. You know, I think Gable season. My biggest fear is that Gable comes into this match, into this tournament, only looking for Nick Wazdowski and completely disregarding Mason Paris, Greg Kirkley, and Tanner Hall. That is a real possibility. That's the problem I see. If he does that, yeah. he might just get fucked. He, yeah. And, like, there's, there's nothing else to say because we see this all the time. Like, who are the biggest locks in Nationals? Spencer and Gable. Yeah. Who was the one guy who we thought was locked? Nobody really watched him, but he went down. Ryan Deacon. You yeah. Know, we go back a couple years. Who were the biggest locks? Nolf and Bo. Grand Nolf cut that close match, but he was still a lock after that. So was Bo. Who was the third guy we thought was a lock that went down? Yeah. Miles Martin. No, we see this happen a lot. We take these matches for granted because I was waiting. We were all waiting for Deacon versus Hadley, right? I, I said Deacon versus Carr. I got yeah. Carr, right? But Hadley went out to get smacked, you know? I, I, was, I was arguing with this one guy. He said, it's a fluke that Hadley lost. You know, I'll, I will go as far as to say it's more of a fluke that Hadley held a close match with Jason Olf than yeah. that Hadley lost yeah. to David Carr. No, and it all comes back to If that two was given... Uh, my money's still on Nolf. Yeah. 
Because again, we've seen not pinned Isaiah Martinez. He's not like it's not he's nobody right now, you know. No yep. versus Chenzo first round of the Olympic Trials. That's gonna be a good one. And if are you frozen right now? Huh? No. Oh dude, you, you just like you were just like staring at oblivion, dude. I don't want to place a pick on this final just yet. I will leave this up to you guys. You guys can place your picks on it. I've said it before. Please subscribe. <laughs> and at a thousand subs, we will be doing a giveaway. I'll give away a hoodie or whatever. I'm a broke college student. I can't afford much. I'm sorry. You know, um, if YouTube gets monetized, I'll start giving away stuff a lot more often. I have nothing to need the money for, but my brain says Gwiz. My heart says Gable. It's the same way at 65. My brain says Zayn. My heart says Yanni. You know? Same thing at 57. My brain says Fix. My heart says Gilman or Seriano. I'm pretty unanimously picking Gwiz, to be honest. I think... I, I don't want to say this, because every time I've picked against Gable, I've been wrong. I think Gable should win this. Hmm. But the fact that Nick Wazdowski's going... Everybody is behind Gable. And fans not being there is definitely a big factor. We saw this too at the at the final X. Like literally everybody was against Gwiz. And that's like he gets slandered so much for absolutely no reason, just because people love Gable. Cause he because yeah. he beat a guy on criteria. Like you beat okay, he beat a nineteen year old on criteria twice. Okay, nobody else in that country could beat that nineteen year old at that time. You know, we were yeah. talking about the same thing against Brett Unger pitting uh, Mason Gibson in the PA State Finals. Like, mm-hmm. he's like, okay, he beat a 15 year old. Nobody else in that state beat that 15 year old. You know, Mason Gibson's going to be very few people in the country beat, beat that 15 year old. Exactly. That's what I'm going to say. You know, and Zane versus Yanni, you know, again, you know, no, nobody said that because Zane, oh, you beat a college sophomore. Okay. Who else beat that dude? And Jaden Nimes is just over here, like, hey, what's up? You know? Again, Ironman, I think Nick Lee is the biggest wild card. Because I was talking about my, my guy, Paul, the one episode he didn't come on. He's a huge Cornell fan. He said that Nick Lee versus Yanni in a freestyle match is like whatever you go rock with Yanni. But in a folk style match, that would genuinely scare me. Just because of how good of a game planner he is. For matches, that would be just a fucking incre- that would be just a fucking incredible match all around. I'm not even gonna lie. Nick Lee versus Yanni in folk style. I I low key think Nick Lee can win that. You know, that's not even. I don't even think that's that bold to pick. Like John McKenna went to overtime with him. Bryce that's Merritt fair. almost beat him. You know. Yeah. If Yanni goes 149, I think he kind of handles Sasso because Sasso is again a guy who's. His approach isn't really going to work against a guy like Yanni. Right? Yeah. That being said, I think my brain says Gwiz, my heart says Gable. That's what I'm going to leave it as. Yeah. I have somebody winning in the third match. That's what I would say. But, anyways, um, thank you guys for listening. It's been episode 69. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep doing really? it. We talked to us before, dude. Yeah, no, Jesus I was thinking about saying the nice line after 69. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude, this whole episode opens up with me laughing at fucking 69. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed. Drop ideas for future podcasts. Some stuff you want to see, you know. We're not that big yeah, of a show yet where we have like a whole agenda. Here, so. If you guys want to see it, we'll try to make a video on it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys again next time. All right, peace.